Well, good morning, everyone. Am I on, my dearly beloved? I am now. That's good. So, good morning and welcome to each of you in chapel today and those of you sharing with us via YouTube. It is wonderful that we can come together as part of Christ's family and share in this wonderful day. Tony's going to be leading, as you know, but just a couple of uh, unpaid political announcements. First, first of all, you may or may not have received one of these flyers. Now, next Sunday afternoon, here in the chapel, the, uh, the Village Ensemble will be giving a performance of Bach and a few other people. After that, we'll be having some drinks and nibbles outside there. You're encouraged to come along, encouraged to bring other people. All we need to know is how many drinks and nibbles we need. So if you'd like to come along, can you just let them know over at the RLO desk that you'd like to come to Bark and Bubbles? Well, hey, I'm just reading it. I don't write it. Now, for our Catholic brothers and sisters, Father Robert is with us today. Welcome back from your wonderful holiday. He also is full of vim, vigour, zeal, zest and enthusiasm. But the Lakes Parish newsletter is available for you at the back, as is the November Masses envelope are also at the back if you would like to collect one of those on your way out. I now hand over to young Tony Bradford. Here he comes. Well, welcome everyone, and uh, if anyone doesn't know me, as Bob said, my name is Tony Bradford, one of the chaplains here, uh, and on behalf of Bob and myself that look after the, uh, the 9.30 congregation, thank you for coming along to this Thanksgiving and Harvest Festival service, and we especially thank our Catholic police, Robert Borg, who conducts the 11 a.m. service here also. And it's great to all come together from here and beyond, beyond today. So we've come together from our two Sunday services in the village and beyond to celebrate our unity in this Thanksgiving and Harvest Festival service. Today, we're not making an offering, but some of the regulars, if they want to make an offering, there is a box at the back on the table that you can do on your way out. The concept of Harvest Festival goes back to ancient Israel, which was the festival of first fruits, an annual harvest festival to celebrate the beginning of the harvest festival season. The people would bring a, a sheaf of wheat or a sheaf of barley from their crop and they'd offer it to God as their first fruits. This reminded the people how God provided for them. Now, just as God's people harvest crops around their festive season, God calls upon us to share our resources with others in need. So we've come together today from all different backgrounds, from all different denominations, and we've come and we are one in Christ. Jesus said, blessed it is to give, then receive. Jesus calls us to share and serve with our abilities, our talents, our resources, to be a blessing to others and especially to those in need. So this year we're again supporting the One Meal Northern Beaches Food Delivery and Relief Charity, which also supports us here at Beersheba each Wednesday with fresh fruit and vegetables and long life food for those in need. And this charity services a lot of other charities on the Northern Beaches and, uh, and a lot of needy people. And I'd like to invite Christine Robbins, who's a team leader with One Meal, 
uh, to give us an update how the Northern Beaches charity is going. Thank you. Um, I don't know. Hello. Hello. Thank Hello. you all for coming. I recognise you. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm Chris Robbins and um, I started off with um, a place called the Community Pantry in Narrabeen quite a few years ago. And then prior to COVID, oh, prior to COVID, um, oh, is that better? Um, uh, you know, a few of us got together and... Um, started delivering food to people in need. And in the last three years, the organisation has grown enormously. Um, so I'd like to just tell you a little bit about what One Meal is doing now. Um, our mission at One Meal is to provide dignified access to healthy, nutritious food relief, support for vul vulnerable, marginalised and at-risk members of our community. And there are a lot of them out there. Um, unfortunately, there, there are. Um, as well as the regular tea and coffee meet up with the veterans at Beersheba, we're also currently providing approximately 16,000 meal equivalents per week, which are put together and distributed by a 100% volunteer workforce. We have no paid people, they're all volunteers. We never say no to a cry for help, but in the current economic climate, there's a significant increase in Australians doing it tough and needing our support. These are vulnerable, marginalised and at-risk members, such as the elderly, the unwell, suffering from terminal in illness, the financially destitute, and people unable to prepare meals for themselves via, and we do this via our home delivery service. One Meal provides meals to 11 women's shelters around Sydney um, for women and children who are escaping from domestic violence. There are many kids going to school without their breakfast and One Meal works with 16 schools via our breakfast po program where we provide sandwiches and breakfast packs to kids missing out on breakfast at home. One Meal is also providing an opportunity for special needs kids from Fisher Road School to learn work-related skills via our composting program, gardening breakfast pack program and soon basic cooking skills in our newly built commercial kitchen. It's great. It's great when you've got, you know, you can help special needs kids to, you know, look forward to something. In addition, they learn teamwork, responsibility, time management, communication, work ethics, as well as social skills while they're contributing to the community in a supportive environment. And all of this is made possible by very generous donations by members of the public and our fantastic volunteers. The don I can't believe, I can't believe the donation of pantry goods that you have supplied here. It's just incredible that, um, you know, there's so much there. I thought I was going to take a few bags back in my car, but my car, <laughs> my, my, car my car's not that big. It's big, but it's not that big. <laughs> um, I mean, the donation of, of these supplies from you is very, very well appreciated. It will go to um, very good causes, you know, people who really need it. Um, it's surprising how, you know, our pantry gets empty and then it gets refilled again, you know, by people donating. And, um, you know, it's heartening to see people being so generous to people in need. Um, I'm, we're a bit, we're a bit passionate about One Meal. Um, I, you, some of you may have met Kim who, who talked to you last year. And um, he's the one who really started this all up. And his passion is boundless. You know, he's, we say he's got a heart bigger than he has. And um, he sees a need and he tries to find a way to fill it. You know, can I just tell you about our composting program, what he did there? Um, can I? Um, we generate, because we do fruit and vegetable bags, we generate a lot of green waste. And we were generating 
too much for the local community garden. So they said, no, we can't take any more. So he got together with Fisher Road Special School, who some of the people volunteer with us anyway. And um, he got Bunnings to donate about 40 composting bins. He got um, the people at Kimbricky Tip to come down and teach the children how to compost properly. He got people from the botanical gardens to come and see what they were doing and they donate seedlings to them. So we have a closed circle. We have our green waste. We take it down, it gets composted properly. It gets put in the garden and the seedlings grow and grow more, more food for them. So that's just one of the, the things that you know, Kim puts in, at, in, in, in place. Um, he's an incredible man and um, he's supported by incredible volunteers, you know, and, um, and donations from people like you keep us going. You know, these donations are just the lifeblood of, of One Meal. Um, so I can say thank you very much to all of you, you know, from my heart. Um, we really do appreciate all that you do and donate for us. And, um, and also, if anybody would like to be on social media, after the end of the service, if any of you would like to come up and stand behind this, I'd love to take a picture back of um, some of you with all of the things that you've donated. Oh, you're getting the nod, you're going to come up. <laughs> So thank you all very much. Well, thank you, Christine. And for someone that's not um, used to doing public speaking, I think you did a wonderful overview and explanation of how things are. Uh, so just keep in mind, they're struggling a bit more because there's more need out in the community. We've had a lot of interest rate rises and things happening. Um, and I'm sure if uh, you know a family member or anyone that may want to volunteer any time to help one meal, I'm sure Christine will be all we use later for that as well. Thank you, Christine. I'm now going to invite uh, Naomi Bartlett to come up. Now, most of us, particularly here in the village, would know Naomi fairly well, but I wanted to give us a little bit about her involvement and history background, and she's representing the management here with us today. Thank you, Naomi. Morning. Morning. <laughs> Yet I'm not very used to public speaking, so I apologise if I stutter. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I joined RSL about eight years ago. Um, so some of you may remember me from my home care days. So I first, I first interviewed about eight years ago. I came in with, with very varied experience, some with youth at risk, um, a lot of work with young people in outdoor education. I remember them sitting there going, we really like you, but we don't know what to do with you. <laughs> so I'm still here. <laughs> so, so I started off working with the home care team. So I spent a lot of time, about half my time inside the village and half my time outside the village. It was an, it was an eye opening experience just how diverse the needs were, uh, both here inside the village and again external. We were going into places where, you know, a lot of people do not, they don't have family. So we might be the only person that that person sees that day. So just to have someone coming in with a smile and saying good morning could actually just make that person's day. So work, work was, often, was often tough, but it was the amount that we got back from that work was something that was really hard to, to um, yeah. <laughs> so after, also whilst I worked with home care, I also then started working within the memory support group that's here in the village. I found particular interest in working with those with cognitive decline. You know, just to be able to help make someone's life and someone's day a bit easier. To help give them a feeling of purpose still at a time when often faced with cognitive decline and diagnosis of dementia, often people feel quite scared. 
to be able to work with them through that is just a real privilege. Uh, about three years ago, I moved then again into um, coordinating home care packages. And I know, again, a lot of you may know me through this. Um, so just being able to help people access home care, it's, a, it's quite a quandary sometimes just being able to get through the My Age Care system. So be able to go out there and sit with them and assist them in being able to get that help. This is something that I continue with the role that I do here in the village now. So about, gosh, it's over a year ago now, I joined as a community manager here in the village. So I enjoyed my time going out and about. I think this, it's, there's something about this village that gets into your blood. It's something very special. There's a real sense of community here in this village. It's very diverse. There's a lot of different social needs here within the village, but it's also just a place, it's vibrant, it's a real, it's a place that draws people in and it does look after people. We spend, so during, during the role that we do here, there's two of us who work here as community managers and we oversee about 450 residents each. So sometimes if I don't get back to you straight away, that's why. <laughs> so it's quite busy. This can range from helping oversee projects and helping keep some of the projects may affect our residents quite a lot. It might be a bit of upheaval and hopefully we will help smooth those wrinkles, not mine, that are developing by the day. <laughs> so, but just help the problems, just to keep it easy for people. We spend also a lot of time going out. I sit with a lot of people, help them get through the My Age Care system if they don't have family to support them, which is something from my previous role I wanted to bring here into this role. And we've set up links with seniors' rights to come in and help um, give people information and just, just kind of tool people up on, you know, how to access things, what rights are, where do we stand? If we sign this bit of paper, does that mean, it, you know, if something changes, it, not, I can't, it, there's no way back, All right? So uh, I reign within this role. It's really broad. Every day is different. Often it's not the day we came in to plan to do. And so at the same time, we've, we, we laugh with you often. We, we love coming out and enjoying those laughs. We'll often sit and cry with people as well. You know, we want to be here for our community. We help guide people through their journey here at the village. Um, and we just thank you for allowing us to do that. Well, thank you, Naomi, for sharing it your history and your role here. And uh, I'd just like to say that um, Naomi really stood out as a very compassionate person when I first noticed her uh, moving around the village, uh, giving care to residents in their homes. Uh, she's very compassionate and she's a good listener. Often it's difficult to find good listeners around nowadays, but Naomi's a very good listener as well. So very much appreciate you coming in representing management with us today. So we're going to continue to celebrate with our next hymn, How Great Thou Art.
We're now going to have a time of prayer. There will be a prayer for the environment, a prayer for social justice, and a prayer for One Meal Charity, and a prayer for peace. So those that uh, have those prayers ready, just come in that order. Thank you. Prayer for the environment. Heavenly Father, thank you for filling the world, the world with beauty and bounty in the cities and in the country, on the coast and inland. You blessed the first humans and commanded them to fill the earth and subdue it. You supply the seed to the sower and bread to the eater. But we and our ancestors have mistreated and damaged the environment. Even our best efforts have been tarnished with ignorance or self-interest. Please continue to bless us with a fruitful world and sustain us with the resources we need for life. Guide the nations and large corporations to seek cooperative and responsible ways of caring for the environment. Give individual individuals the willingness to play their part in being wise stewards of what you give us. May we look to you as the creator and sustainer of our world and give you glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A prayer for social justice. Loving God, you created all people in your own image, in glorious diversity, and you care for each and every soul. Help us to be a people of love who may see, hear, and feel with our hearts the needs of all those whose paths we cross, all those you make known to us. Make us a just society where the rights of all are acknowledged and upheld. Guide with wisdom all those who make and administer our laws and take part in our justice system so that right may prevail against evil. Guide and empower all aid agencies and humanitarian services so that suffering may be eased and the oppressed set free. Give companies, social institutions, and all those serving in government the desire to act for the good of all, rather than the advantage of a few, so enabling equitable division of resources, opportunities, and privileges in society where corruption has no place. Help us to be a society where human rights are expected and discrimination is not allowed to flourish. Guide and empower Christians to model the values of your kingdom in all their relationships so that all may know we are your disciples seeking the higher standards of moral and ethical justice. Hasten the day when Jesus will return to establish your reign in perfect justice and harmony for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Prayer for the One Mill Charity. Lord, we thank you for One Mill Food Relief Charity that is doing such important and urgent work helping some of the neediest individuals on the northern beaches in food relief. We thank you that their wonderful volunteers also give of themselves as compassionate listeners to those they are serving, which helps bring them the sense of belonging and community. 
We also thank you for their contribution to our village every Wednesday with the pantry kitchen at Bathsheba, in food relief and in community building. Lord, we ask for a continual blessing on their work and that local businesses will continue to supply food generously for them to prepare and distribute. Lord, we pray a blessing on all their volunteers. Let them continue to be your channels of love and peace as they serve you and serve the Northern Beaches communities. Amen. A prayer for peace. Loving Father, mighty defender, Prince of peace, spirit of truth and love, creator of heaven and earth, the sea and all that is, you keep your promise forever. Thankful are we as we come before you in praise and adoration. As the darkness of war and conflict splits and diversifies over the earth, not just the open conflicts of Ukraine and Russia, Israel and Palestine, but the conflicts building unseen as yet on the world stage. Everywhere that evil is present, guard us and guide us. Most loving Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, has taught us to love our enemies and to pray for them. We beseech you, give to those who are now our enemies the light of your Holy Spirit, Grant that they and we, being enlightened in conscience and cleansed from every sin, may know and do your will, and so be changed from foes to friends, united in your service through Jesus Christ. Abba, you have filled the world with paths to peace. Help us to find them, to take them. Guide us in the way of peace. From ignorance, lead us to truth. From darkness, lead us to light. From death, lead us to immortality. For you are the author of peace and lover of all concord. <clears throat> Your son taught us, blessed are the peacemakers, the defenders of peace. Bless our armed defence forces and defend their just use of force. And when they fall, receive them into your kingdom. For greater love hath no man than to lay down his own life in the cause of freedom. Bless our police force who serve alongside our ADF members, keeping them free from all harm. Abba, grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to King Charles III, the Commonwealth, peace and concord. Help us all to go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good. Render evil to no man. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honour all people. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works do proceed, give to all your servants that peace which the world cannot give. Support us all this day long. Help us to live in peace and in harmony for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you all for those lovely prayers. And uh, just before we sing our next hymn, they'll know that we are Christians by our love. Well, we're seeing very practical expressions of God's love, aren't we? All this food and one meal charity and those prayers for most important things around the world. And Jesus said, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another. By this shall all men know that that we are Christians, basically, or know us by our love. So it's so important to be practical and uh, offer care, whether it's a peacemaker, whether it's a mule, whether it's a donation, but to reach out to those around us and show our love through our actions. And uh, it brings us together in unity, this love. So let's sing that hymn with some of those thoughts. Thank you. <coughs>
I love that hymn. <laughs> okay, let's continue to have some more prayers. A prayer for Homes for Heroes, a prayer for the Christian work in the village, and then um, a prayer for the Board of Management, and Bob's got something special in between that, so he'll let you know when that time comes. We owe a huge debt of gratitude to all who have served and particularly to those suffering both physical and emotional wounds. So let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for the dedicated staff and management of Homes for Heroes. Please continue to fill them with compassion and wisdom as they assist in the recovery of veterans and service personnel. We pray that the Home for Heroes program will continue to have great success in providing accommodation and rehabilitation to those in greatest need, especially veterans vulnerable to homelessness, to depression, despair and suicide. We pray, Lord, that you would bring healing to broken lives through Homes for Heroes so they can start over again with positive outlooks and outcomes. Give the staff wisdom to discern those who will need long-term support, and we pray that they can help provide their clients with solutions in housing and social and emotional support. We ask you to protect their lives and to save them from destructive habits and thoughts. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray for the Christian work in the village. We thank you, Lord, for our chaplains, Tony, Bob, and Father Robert. Enable them to put you first in their lives. Empower them by the Holy Spirit to serve and to serve you and to love and serve others diligently and in humility. Lord God, we thank you for our many pastoral volunteers who serve in our hostels, nursing home, and visit those in need throughout the village. Strengthen and enable them in this work by the power of the Holy Spirit. We also thank you for all the other volunteers who work faithfully to be a blessing to others in the village. Strengthen them also in their service and in the joy of giving. Amen. Amen. Thanks for those prayers, Gina, for the, for the Christian work in the village here. But the Christian work is not just done by we three. Not just done by you. But it's done by a lot of, a lot of other people who live in our village as well. Did you know we have, at least that I'm aware of, three retired ministers in our community here? We have Reverend Hugh Proctor. We have the Reverend... John Seddon, who's with us today. Uh, Hugh, Hugh couldn't make it. I don't see him. Where? Right up the back of the quarantine. No, Hugh. Oh, no. oh, you, sorry. So hard to get good help on a Sunday. <laughs> but there's another minister here who, on Tuesday the 30th, will be celebrating thir uh, sorry, 50 years of ordination on the 30th of November, isn't it? October. Okay. Just testing, see if you're paying attention. <laughs> Born in Wollongong to working class parents, a series of life experiences led Ray Green to become a minister of religion, being ordained on the 1st of November, 1973. As a young minister, Ray contributed to the establishment of the Uniting Church in Australia all those years ago. I mean, what an awesome task this would have been 
for a young minister. And perhaps that's why they picked you, Dre, not just because they saw within you all the wonderful gifts and skills and graces you have, but a young church needed young guidance as well. So collectively, Ray was very heavily involved in the establishment of the Uniting Church. Amongst other accomplishments, because he's got so many, Ray was the National Chaplain to the Girls' Brigade Australia. Ray became the Grand Master of the United Grand Lodge of New South Wales. Stepping outside of all that, Ray was also the first permanent senior chaplain of the New South Wales Ambulance Service. You could just imagine the responsibility that goes with a position like that. Here we go. Veterans, Ray was also the chaplain to the Warilla RSL sub-branch because Ray served uh, himself in the Defence Force. However, despite his many achievements, it's always been Ray's desire to be where the people are, to be there in service for all people, regardless of their race, their colour, their gender, their spiritual beliefs or their church affiliation. This is what Ray values most. Ray's mission statement is this. Where there is a hurt, heal it. Where there is a need, meet it. The Reverend Ken Moran in Ray's ordination address encouraged Ray to feed my sheep. And throughout his ministry, Ray, with the help of Janet, has certainly done that. So to you, Ray and Janet, we thank you for your 50 years, not just of ordination, but your 50 years of service to the work of the Lord here and all the places you've been. Our prayers for our board of management and our staff. Let's pray. Loving Father God, we're blessed to be able to live not just in this wonderful part of your creation we call Australia, but in this wonderful village we call home. We've been blessed, Lord, by the inspiration and vision of our management to turn this village from a collection of dated homes to the wonderful place it is. For our previous management team, which has made this possible, we thank you. We thank you that they dared to move away from the traditional thought processes and venture into the unknown. What we see around us is the result of many years of hard work and vision. But the work is not done, Lord. We cannot either as residents or management, afford to sit back on our laurels and, and think, yes, the work is done. There's still so much ahead of us, Lord, and we thank you for the current management team, which will continue to build upon the successes of the past. We pray your loving, guiding hand upon the board and senior management as they consider not just the physical improvements needed for our village, but also the spiritual and mental well-being of our residents. We've come not just to live in a unit, but to live in a community, a community of love and friendship, a community of life. The signs in our buses say, adding life to years and years to life. And Father God, this is what we all hope and pray for as we share with each other. And we can only do this if we do it together. Yeah, sometimes we don't know everything that's going on or the full reasons behind decisions. So, Lord, sometimes we need to be a little patient. We need to be a little tolerant so that we can work together to find solutions to the problems in front of us. Help us through the times of change. Help us to assist management in identifying the concerns held by each of us. So loving Father God, as we move forward, 
We give thanks for the on-site management and staff, for those in independent living and residential care. These are men and women who implement the policies from above, but more importantly, Father, they help us to live the lifestyle we want and need. We give thanks for our village manager, Stephanie, and her very hard-working team, a team which strives to make our mottos a reality, not just for some, but for all. So give them your wisdom. Give them your strength. Give them your guidance, but most of all, loving Father, give them your love, give them your compassion, that they may achieve the results we are looking for. Lord, as we face the challenges ahead, we pray that we can be confident that our wonderful staff will do all they can for us as together we live and work in community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Old Testament readings from Exodus 21 to 21. Thank you. Ten Commandments. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall no, have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or in earth beneath, or in the waters below, you shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse, misuse my name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath by keeping it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigners residing in your towns, for in the six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in it, in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honour your father and your mother so, <coughs> so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbour's house. You shall not covet your neighbour's wife or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to his neighbour. When the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, Speak to us yourself. And we will listen, but do not have God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of the Lord, fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. The people remained at a distance while Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. The reading of God's word. Psalm 104, 14 to 28. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth, wine that gladdens human hearts, oil to make their faces shine and bread that sustains their hearts. The trees of the Lord are well watered, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There be there the birds make their nests, 
The stork has its home in the junipers. The high mountains belong to the wild goats. The crags are the refuge of the lynx. He made the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun knows when to go down. You bring darkness, it becomes night, and all the beasts of the forest prowl. The lions roar for their prey and seek their food from God. The sun rises and they steal away. They return to lie down in their dens. Then people go out to their work, to the labour until evening. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both large and small. There the ships go to and fro, and Leviton, which you formed to frolic there, all creatures look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. Matthew 22, 34 to 40, the great commandment. Here, hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the laws and the Pharisees prophets had on these two commandments. This the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Congratulations, Ray, on your 50 years of ordination and thank you for those that have shared further prayers and for those that brought our Bible readings. Just join me now as I say a short prayer and then Father Robert will bring our message to us today. Loving Father, empower Father Robert by your Holy Spirit and transform our hearts and minds by your living word. Renew and mould and shape us by your word to live in the image of your Son, the incarnated word who came into our world. Amen. Amen. Now, most people know Father Robert, but it's my pleasure to invite him, and he's from the local Lakes Parish. Thank you, Robert. Well, still morning. Good morning, and... Um, <laughs> It's good to be here for my uh, brothers and sisters from the Catholic uh, denomination. Apologies if you didn't realise this was on this morning. But um, it's good to share in unity the common faith <coughs> that we have. <clears throat> Last month, this li literally a month ago, I was on the island of Malta. Uh, my dad was Maltese, my mum was Australian. They met here 
And uh, we went back with my own family, my uh, sister, niece, nephew, partner, now his fiance, and my great niece who turned one during the week. And we remembered the good things that dad did when he was on that island. Now it'll be in the news tonight, not because I'm preaching about it, but you might pray all the defense ministers from around Europe are gathering in Malta. Putin is not happy about it, but that's good. <laughs> At least he knows it's on. No, so we need to pray that some peace can come for Ukraine and also for the Middle East as we already have prayed. But I remember one of the stories I told the children at Mass this morning, three Masses I've already had, that we had this little altercation in our family, my sister and myself. You may not realize that we did get up to mischief when we were young as well. We're not the holy people that perhaps we are <laughs> today, but we still get up to mischief even today. And Dad called us over and he said to us in Maltese, Fula Machsuma. Doesn't sound nice, does it? Fula Machsuma. And then he did this. But it was the look. You know when a parent looks at you. And I had to work out what Fula Machsuma meant. You've got to have that in your throat, you don't know how to do it. Anyway, we went away and we didn't get it. And my uncle came over and I said to my uncle, who's dad's brother, Uncle Frank, I said, what does Fula Machsuma mean? Oh, Rob, he says. And he goes like this, he said nothing and walked away. <laughs> and my auntie, his wife, Auntie Carmen, was there and you come in. Yes, he, she said. What does Fula Machsuma mean? Oh. She says it means a peanut cut in half. <laughs> What's that got to do with today's message? Because my sister and I were like a peanut when you cut it, one on this side, one on this side. We resembled each other in our action. Eh? We were brother and sister, siblings. But Dad wanted us to put it back together again, not just to break the unity, but put the unity back together to try and be better people. They had a strange way of explaining it to us like that. And I said to my congregation this morning, you know, it's what the gospel is about today. We have to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength, but we have to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. It resembles, it's the other side of the peanut and we put it together. And so we have that unity once again. So I suppose the message for me that I believe today is that what we do is what we do by our actions. That's why the hymn, you like your hymn, Tony, we know our Christians, by our love, by our work, by our prayer. It doesn't matter where we're doing it, as long as we are doing it. So I pray that, I ask my uh, indulgence for those of you who may have a peanut allergy. It's not a very good uh, thing to have. But the peanut, when you eat a peanut next time, if you're able to, think about loving God and think about loving our neighbor. And if you uh, can't eat a peanut, perhaps you can think about that when somebody else eats a peanut. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. That was a lovely message. And um, one of the things that uh, goes along with love, and I think it's very important because none of us are perfect, is forgiveness. And our next song is about God forgiving us. And of course, the Lord's Prayer reminds us that we need to also forgive others. So God forgave my sin.
The next instance is uh, have a few responses for you that will go up here. So uh, they'll be in uh, darker writing in italics. So God gives grass for the cattle. He brings forth food from the earth. Oil to make the face shine and bread to strengthen us. Exodus 23, 16 says, Celebrate the festival of harvest with the first fruits of the crop you sow in your field. Celebrate the festival of ingathering at the end of the year when you gather in your crops from the fields. Now the Israelis would joyfully bring their offerings and they'd sing praises to God. So let us think about this as we sing our next hymn, Praise and Thanksgiving. I'm going to invite Joan to share the prayer of the day. Thank you. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have again shown your kindness by giving us the fruits of the earth in their seasons. Help us to use them rightly to your glory for our own well-being and for the relief of those in need. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Before I say the final blessing, um, can I ask your prayers for one of our parishioners, uh, Ross Fleming, who died in the surf at DY yesterday. 
Uh, he was unresponsive. He's from New Zealand and his family are there. His wife is Peruvian and she's the only one here and have a young daughter who has uh, just made her confirmation. So uh, we pray for them if you wouldn't mind in your hearts for them. So let us pray. Loving God, we bring to you our thoughts, our actions, our desires, and we pray that as we go forth from this holy place, that we will make the world holy by our own presence. We thank you for the gift that we received in baptism of faith. May that faith continue to be spread throughout the whole world, that one day there will be one flock and one shepherd. And we ask your blessing upon us all as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father Robert. And we'll finish our service with I, the Lord of Sea and Sky. Well, thank you all for your generous offerings and uh, one meal 
much appreciate that. And uh, thank you also for coming along and partaking in the service today and those partaking through the streaming as well. Um, in this Thanksgiving and Harvest Festival service, it's truly a special service that we do together. Uh, now, you're also warmly invited to continue to celebrate and share fellowship over, lo over lunch in the Lone Pine Room. Now, all of us that are local know where that is. That's in the Gallipoli building over there up on the third floor. And those that are visiting with us, you're most welcome to join us also. There's lifts at the end of the cafeteria. So we'll continue to enjoy fellowship there together. So I'll just say another little short closing prayer. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour all people. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now go forth, Christ's ambassadors. Amen. Amen. So just be mindful of people with walkers when you're going out.